If you're looking for a way to preserve extra lemons or limes, look no further than lemon or lime curd. Sweet tart, smooth and creamy. If you haven't tasted homemade lemon curd before, you're in for a treat. It is far better than the commercial product you can buy at the store. We're making it today with the Ankerstrom Assistant Mixer and the smaller bowl that comes with the mixer. And lemon or lime curd refrigerates or freezes really well for extended storage. Hi, I'm Michelle and I'm here to help you create your slice of country living wherever you live. Welcome to Chocolate Box Cottage, the sweet spot between old-fashioned skills and modern convenience. We are making lemon curd today. Lemon or lime curd is a very special way to preserve extra lemons or limes. It's also a way to preserve extra egg yolks, with the whites being reserved for another purpose, such as angel food cake, French macarons, or extra fluffy omelets. Today's recipe can be found at my website, chocolateboxcottage.tv, and I will share the link for that in the description below the video and in the pinned comment. Let's take a look at the ingredients. We're making a double batch, so I am doubling the ingredients. Six lemons or 12 limes, a cup of butter, eight egg yolks and two whole eggs, and two and a quarter cups sugar. Prepare a double boiler. Take a large pot or a large saucepan and run about two inches of water in it and set it on the stove over medium heat. Locate another saucepan or a heat proof bowl that you can nest inside it, but don't set it on top yet, just set it aside. Use a mandolin zester to grate the fragrant colored portion of the peel from each of the lemons or limes. If you don't have a mandolin zester, that's okay. Simply use a vegetable peeler or a very sharp paring knife and just do your best to carefully remove the thin colored portion of the skin without taking along any of the white pith. Once you've removed that in peels, you can use a chef's knife to chop it up. Cut the fruit in half and squeeze them into a small bowl. It is easier to zest the fruit while it's whole rather than waiting till after you've cut and juiced the fruit. Don't throw the seeds away. You can plant these and grow Meyer lemon trees from seed. I have a video that will show you how to do that and I'll put the link in the description box below. Next we want to strain the juice through a fine strainer to eliminate any of the flesh and small seeds that might have come through. We need one cup of lemon juice. And we are using Meyer lemons, so it has more of an orange tint to it. If you have extra zest, you can air dry it and add it to a spice jar and use it in future recipes calling for lemon zest. Add the juice and the zest to the top part of your double boiler. Slice the butter and add it to the pan with the zest and the juice. If you're using unsalted butter, add a pinch of salt. If you are a new Ankus Room Mixer owner, congratulations, you've made a wise purchase. This recipe is a good opportunity to get acquainted with the other bowl that came with your mixer, the 3.7 liter Triton Copolyester Bowl. We're going to remove the eight liter stainless steel bowl by turning the knob so that the arm will move past the rim of the bowl and set this aside. Take the drive shaft notched side down and fit it into the mixer base. Then add your bowl to the drive shaft and turn until it clicks into place. Next, you'll want to add the whisks. Before you snap the balloon whisks into the whisk drive housing, ensure that the ring gear is positioned correctly. The beveled side should fit and face the housing and rotate smoothly. Now snap in the balloon whisks 
until you hear them click and then give them a spin to make sure that they rotate. A mistake that I occasionally see new mixer owners make is they assemble this piece upside down and then the whisks won't spin. So this sets right on top. And if you have an older version of this mixer, such as the Magic Mill, Electrolux, Verona, or AEG, you may have a white plastic bowl that came with your mixer instead. And that is perfectly fine to use. Recently, the manufacturer introduced a new version. Isn't that pretty? A stainless steel with mirror finish, 3.7 liter bowl. It's the same as the Triton Co polyester bowl and I really like it. I enjoy using it. However, today I am gonna stay with the clear bowl, clear bowl just so that you can see what's happening. Separate the eggs, adding the eight egg yolks and the two whole eggs to the mixer bowl. As you are separating your eggs, I recommend that you do it one at a time and allow the white to drop into a small bowl first before adding that to the larger amount of egg whites. This will make sure that it is free of any yolk. And these will get baked and returned to the chickens. All of our eggs are in the bowl. And if you are a new Oncaster mixer owner, you might have some questions about how the controls work. So let me go over that really quick. The machine comes with two knobs. The one on the left is your on off power switch and contains a 12 minute timer. We're not going to use the timer today because we'll need to keep a really close eye on this mixture as it whips, but it does come in handy sometimes. And the other knob is a speed control dial. It helps if you visualize this one like a clock. So if the knob is pointed straight up with the dot at the top, that means it's set at 12 o'clock, which is low speed. To turn the mixer on, you want to start on low speed and then gradually increase the speed to about medium or medium high, which is between five to six o'clock on this mixer. Now, don't turn your back on this and don't walk away because sometimes it can go more quickly than you expect. Gradually begin adding the sugar. I'm gonna increase the speed a little bit more. are very thorough and so this recipe this step of whipping is going to go faster with this mixer than it would with another mixer so I just want you to be prepared for that it's already turning thicker I'm gonna get the rest of the sugar in there and let it continue to whip until it is very thick and very pale and fluffy this can take up to four minutes, but like I said, don't turn your back on it. It's getting close. Okay, let's take a look. All right, it is very fluffy, almost looks like marshmallow, and it looks like the sugar has dissolved into the mix. Scrape the beaters off. And we're going to add this mixture to the top of our double boiler. Isn't that beautiful? Good food is beautiful. So smooth and creamy. This is going to be luscious. And I want to get every last bit out of the bowl because this is such an amazingly delicious treat. There we go. Remember we have our lemon juice, our lemon zest, and our butter in the bowl. 
and I want to thank my friend Annie for the lemons. I've got a couple left. They were such a nice gift. Thank you, Annie. Okay, let's add our mixture to the top of the double boiler. The water is simmering in the pan here. I'm actually going to turn it up just a little bit more and place this on top. There we go. Now just begin whisking. You don't want it to uh, turn gummy on the bottom. So stay close by. It's going to be worth it, I promise. Within a couple of minutes, the butter that was sliced and added will start to melt. Continue to whisk the mixture until it is fragrant and steaming hot. If you have a thermometer, it will register between 165 to 170, which is about 74 to 77 Celsius, I believe. Okay, we're there. Now I'm going to get some finger mitts because there's steam under here and I don't want to steam burn. And just carefully lift this off of the base. And turn off the burner so that this will stop cooking. My daughter Miriam stopped by, so I thought I would get her opinion on how these turned out. So I'm going to take a, a scoop here. And it's still very warm, so it's going to be messy. And I made these little rye scones, which I'll have the recipe for the regular wheat version on my website. All right, go ahead and take a taste. Mm. <laughs> Zingy. <laughs> What'd you say? Zingy. Okay, well that's what lemon curd should taste like. It should have a real fresh zing to it and be very delicious. It's great on scones, it's great on it's great on angel food cake, on pound cake, spice cake, gingerbread. It's wonderful with fresh berries in the summer. A really elegant dessert is to just add a dollop of lemon curd to a bowl of fresh berries and we're going to strain this through this strainer we'll just press it through here and then I'm going to fill the jars and they last in the refrigerator for several months or in the freezer for up to a year well it looks like the whole family's home now so thanks for joining me today at chocolate box cottage it was a lot of fun bye-bye <laughs>